Well, YouTube today had power jack, not power jack, USB C repair. This is not the model. This is the model. Uh, this laptop I received its ThinkPad E15 Generation 4 Lenovo 20 volts 3.25 input for the USB Type C repair. However, the client is a computer shop, uh, and I couldn't refuse a computer shop uh, to send the laptop here because uh, he, that person sends me a lot of laptops. And he asked me to take a look at it, and he knew it's not a power connector issue, even though I get those here for the power connector issue all the time. But he said it's probably not a power connector issue because the laptop was working fine, then it switched to the battery, and then it died, and nobody dropped it, nobody did anything uh, to to the to damage the connector. And I looked at the connector, and I didn't see any damage. So, but I seen some of that stuff before. So I went directly in and I replaced one of the components. I'm going to show you which one. And I'll show the part number I replaced it with. And it started to work. So uh, before I'm going to show you that it's starting to work, I cleaned it up a little bit. And because I cleaned it up, I don't want to plug in the power right now. I would rather explain to you uh, what I replaced. So if you never had to wiggle the connector on this model, on E15 generation 4, if you never had to wiggle anything, if you never had to rotate left, right, up, down, left, right, it just switched to the battery and then died, then you probably have exactly the same problem as this laptop. Um, the part I replaced is this right here. This is a MOSFET. Um, it's a... Let's see, I have some part numbers here. Yeah, it's a MOSFET, uh, MOSFET 30 volts, 12 amps, and um, yeah, it's a 20 volt, uh, 30 volt, 30 volt, 12 amp MOSFET, and that was the last one I have here, had here. Usually I replace them in uh, sequence, I replace this guy and that guy, but I only have one left, so I just replaced this one. And once I replace this guy, um, I will show you the part number which I replaced it with and which part number right. So uh, this video is made for my future clients who decide to ship the laptop to me. You do need to reference this video because once I'm done with the system, I will forget it in about five minutes what I did to it. So if you send me a laptop saying, you know what, you did a video on it, do the same thing. You need to ref reference the video. I have a thousand plus videos of different laptop makes and models, different problems. You do need to reference this video. You need to reference that I put a new MOSFET right there. Uh, this one, not that one. Let me show you a close up here. I will switch to the microscope in a second, show you better version of it. All right. So this is the guy I replaced, not that one. Usually this guy fries and you could see a damage to the insulation, to, to the black insulation. Here there was no damage, no melting to the insulation. I just replaced it because that's the first thing I usually replace. And once I replace that guy, it did power up, all right? So uh, usually what I replace is this guy. If it doesn't work, then I replace this guy. If it doesn't work, I replace this fuse right here. Uh, there is a little fuse. I will show you on the microscope in a second. I replace the fuse. If that's not going to work, I replace uh, this uh, uh, chip, which is um, let me let me remember the name of that chip. It's called it's a, it's called a dual port or maybe single port uh, USB Type C and USB PD. Um, it's called the uh, TPS65994 ADRSLR. That's the part number for this guy. Now, this is a pain to replace, uh, but it's constantly heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down, and sometimes it just uh, comes off the motherboard. So, this one needs to be replaced first, then this one, then this, um, this fuse, and then that guy. But before you're going to do anything, you usually need to look at the condition of them. If this guy is fried, then obviously replace it. If this guy is fried, replace that one instead of that one. If this guy is fried, replace the fuse. If this guy shows the damage, then replace that one. 
And uh, the way how I rounded up to it, uh, I'd done hundreds of USB Type-C repairs. And when I re replaced the USB Type-C, usually, not usually, but in 50% of the cases, system still doesn't work because the clients usually just send it to me saying, here, figure it out. But uh, the business is all about uh, USB-C repairs, not, uh, not about, um, I mean, USB-C repair is inherited from powerjackrepair.org. Powerjackrepair.org is where just regular connectors are being replaced. And I have to start uh, working on USB-C repair. And that's the reason why it's called USB-C repair.com because I was the first guy to work on USB-C, on USB type C repairs, basically. And USB, USB type C repair.com is also my website. So, so this is what you need to know, right? So once you replace this guy, if that's not going to work, you replace that guy, that guy, this guy, and that guy. And then it should work in theory. All right, so let me show you under the microscope uh, the parts I took off and the parts I put on. All right. All right, so here is the, you can see uh, the part. Hold on one second, where is the... All right, so under my microscope, this is the new part right here. It's a E120GN, all right? And did I install it properly? That's the question. Huh, strange. This guy is here. Well, let me see how it looked on the old one. Hold on. Maybe, maybe I installed it the wrong way. Hold on. Where is the first pin was at? Hold on. I took this guy off. Oh no, it's correct. So the first pin was there. So this is the first pin. So this is the component that I took off. All right, it's identical to this one, G8. Right there, G8, oops. G8. G8, GUB. I, I don't have the G8 GUB one, I just put this MOSFET, the one that's E120 G and 30 volts, 12 amps, should be good enough, all right? Um, I think, uh, I mean, probably different manufacturer, maybe, maybe not. So, yeah, so that's how it looks on the other side, this component. Mm -mm. Okay, that's how it looks on the other side. Doesn't seem to be damaged in any way to me. It's just some flux and some uh, dust already collected on it. So yeah, um, but once I replaced it, uh, the laptop, uh, the, the, the board started to respond. Uh, you see some, some of the hair here because I was making sure that everything is nice and clean because the flux from this guy I put flux on everything, but then I figured, you know, let me start one by one. So I replaced that guy and then I tested. Once I tested it and it works, I figured, let me clean up the flux. And you can see the flux is still not cleaned all the way. So I need to clean up the flux even better. Because this is not the way how it needs to be. All right. I haven't cleaned as well as needed because I was thinking maybe there are some, some other issues but there is no other issues besides this guy so all right so it's qb6 all right and this one is ti248 al sp8 tps65994 this guy uh, goes out all the time on those all right so the way how you know it's not that guy is if you plug in the uh, uh the usb connector into usb port if it gives you 20 volts but doesn't do any amperage that means this guy is working to 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 do the handshake from 5 to 20. So that means the reason the amperage is not drawn, it's being stuck right here or right here. So either here or here. And this is supposed to give 20 volts on this output here. All right. Strange. Why is it? No, that's all good. That's all good. So uh, if it gives 20 volts here, great. That means this one is fine. If it gives 20 here, that means this one is fine. If it doesn't give 20 volts right here on the output, that means uh, this guy is not conducting through. That means either there is a shortage on the motherboard someplace else, and uh, this guy is shutting down, or this guy is bad. All right, so I just replaced that. Hopefully, there is no shortage on the motherboard anywhere else, uh, because those are made to 
to see if there's a shortage someplace. If there's a shortage, they're not going to conduct the electricity. All right. So let me show you that it's going to work. All right. Let me show you that it's uh, it's working. Um, now this should give you 20 volts and something like 0 0.8 amps. 20 volts, 0 0.734 amps. Fan is spinning right here. You see the fan is spinning? Now let's try the other way. The other way we still, and the fan is spinning. So we're good. We are good on this board. I'm going to dry it out a bit more just to make sure there is no ISP left on the board. And yeah, that was the video I wanted to make. Uh, so if you someplace in India and you don't know where, where to look for, for this um, uh, repair, you just, uh, just replace that connector and you should be MOSFET and you should be okay. All right. Thanks so much. Please leave a like, subscribe. And if this video was helpful, uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye.